We're gonna go for a six and a half hour car ride today. We are in the middle of four weeks with no screens, and today is gonna be the most challenging part of our four weeks. Are you guys nervous about six and a half hours in a car with no screens? Not really. Why not, Maya? Because Just because see. of those bags. I know, I have some tricks up my sleeve today that I'm really excited about. We're loaded up in the car and on our way to... Hey everyone, we are going on a I'll... road trip today. Are you ready for a road I'll... trip, guys? Yeah. yeah. Now there's gonna be one major challenge in this road trip. What is it? No screens. No screens. Ah. We are in the middle of four weeks with no screens, Ow. and today is gonna be the most challenging part <laughs> of our four weeks, because we're gonna go for a six and a half hour car ride today. Six and a half hours without stop, so probably even longer than that we're gonna be on the road. Colin, do you know where we're going? Vacation with candy. We're actually not gonna tell you where we're going. You can come along with us on this crazy car ride, but to see where we end up, you're gonna have to watch our next vlog. The next vlog is, should air on Monday, March uh -huh. 15th, and it's gonna uh -huh. be a really special one, uh -huh. Melissa Colin. Uh -huh. Are you guys nervous about six and a half uh -huh. hours in a car with no screens? Uh -huh. Not really. No? Not really. Why not, Maya? Just because of those bags. I know, I have some tricks up my sleeves today that I'm really excited about. No and what do you see, Colin? You see, see an amazing snack bag, too. There's donuts. There's donuts. <laughs> Is that gonna make your ride extra fun? Huh? Oh. I found an idea on Pinterest to put together fun surprise bags to open every hour of the car ride. So I have six bags here that the kids are gonna get to open. They're gonna have activities and things to do to keep us busy uh -huh. during our journey today. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, are you excited? <laughs> I have the bags numbered one through six. I saw some really cute ideas to actually put the time on each bag that they're supposed to be opened, but I wasn't sure exactly what time we were leaving, so I didn't go for that route. Another idea was to put the city that you pass through, and every time you pass through the city on the bag, you get to open the bag, which I thought was fun too. And parents, if you wanna try this at home for your next car ride, I wanna let you know that these don't have to be expensive items. The whole purpose was for this to be easy and inexpensive, so most of the things I found were from the Target Dollar bins from five and below or the dollar store I really wanted it just to be a fun surprise element and nothing that was gonna break the bank to get across from here to our destination I actually have a bag here of all the items I'm going to swap out and put in the surprise bags on our way home from our destination so I thought I'd give you a quick peek at the type of items I'm including so for example, I bought some of these scratch and design sheets where you scratch off paper and you make all sorts of designs and pictures. I bought several just silly fidget items. I don't remember what these are called, but they were in the Target dollar bin and I used to love these when I was a kid. They're just fun to play with and fidget with. I found these little mini um, doodle boards again. I think these are from the Target dollar bin. I think they were just about $3. And I got an I Spy game, which will be a fun game we can play together as a family. Here's that travel size Bop It, which is such a fun game. I think it'll keep the kids busy. And then I got even just a few little, um, let's see, like activity sticker books to keep Colin busy. And even some yummy treats. My plan for when we return from the trip is to put all these items in a bin up in my closet so that way they only come out when it's time for a road trip. That way I think the items will still be exciting and it'll be another reason the kids actually look forward to long road trips together as a family. This is one of the games we're gonna bring. It's the license plate game. These are license plates for all the states in our country and we're gonna see how many license plates we can see while we're out and about. Does that sound like fun? Mm -hmm. Sure. I used to play this with my sister when we were kids. Every car I'd go and we'd look at all the license plates and see how many different license plates we could see and also see where the furthest car was from, which is kind of fun to do. Are we going to find like where it's from or like what it looks like? Just where it's from. So for example, if we find a car that's from Mississippi, we'll check off Mississippi on our sheet. So if we find a car from Oklahoma, we'll check off Oklahoma on our sheet. Let's take a guess right now how many different States, do you think we're gonna see license plates from? Hmm. 20. 20, what do you think? I think maybe around like five or 10. Five or 10, I'll go, I'm gonna guess 12. Mm. Let's see what we find today. 
We're loaded up in the car and on our way to Mystery Destination! Are you ready to go to the Mystery Destination? Yes. Are you ready to go? Yes. What about you, Colin? I'm ready to go. We have lots to do to keep us busy on this car ride. What's the first thing we're gonna do, kiddos? Listen to Horrible Harry. Listen to Horrible Harry, is that what you wanna do? Yes. Before we left, I downloaded a few audibles onto my phone so we can listen to some yeah. books on tape, although I guess yeah. they're not really on tape anymore. But we're gonna start with Horrible Harry because I thought that would be a good one to keep Colin entertained. Yeah. We're 40 minutes into our car ride, and how many license plates have we found, or how many states? 12, 13. 13, that's a lot. I can't believe we've already checked off 13 states, and it hasn't even been an hour yet. Did we already get Maine? We already got Maine. Seriously? That's our second car from Maine right there. Ah. Maine is definitely one of our further ones. Arizona's pretty far, too. You've seen Arizona. Well, we've seen Arizona. We saw Arizona. Maine, New Hampshire, Mississippi, New Mexico, Alabama. We've got quite a few. Oh, here's another one. Ooh, Delaware. That's our first. Delaware. We don't have Delaware yet. There's number 14. What state do you think will be the hardest one to find, Jason? What state? Uh huh. Probably California. I was going to say Hawaii. Or Hawaii. And yeah. Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will be hard. I wasn't counting the uh, those. Oh, that truck's Texas. Do we have Texas yet? No, it's our first Texas. All right, number 15. We just found a car from California. That car's traveled a long yes. ways, hasn't it? So long. So far. Oh, we found, we found That one's from Maine again. How many states do we have now, Maya? 20. 20. We're almost halfway done. I know. Parents, if you want to download your own license plate game, I found this at a blog called Paper Trail Design. So far, it has been a hit. Since trucks travel all over the country, they're helping us out tremendously. Most of the states we've gone so far are trucks. We've officially been on the road for one hour, so that means we get to open our very first surprise bag. Ooh, scavenger hunt. Scavenger hunt? Get to that car again. Each player is going to get five scavenger hunt cards, and we have to look for the things on the five cards that we have. When we find them, we shout it at everybody, we prove that we found it, and we discard it. The first person to discard 10 cards wins. Here are my cards, another car with two kids in it. I have a fuel card, a big truck, green grass, and what's this, a motel or hotel. I already found a big truck over here, so my first discard is complete. What are you girls looking for? I'm looking for a person talking on a cell phone, a fence, a bird, a person, a person wearing a hat, and a speed I have green grass, which should be easy to find, but it's winter and all, oh, there's green grass! There is green grass! Found green grass. I was gonna say most of the grass is dead, but we just spotted some. Thank you, Addy. Mm -hmm. You found it for me. Completed one. I saw a truck driver wearing a hat. Good Ooh. job, girl. Okay, so I'm gonna discard this. Jason, you gotta look for a yellow car and a bus for me. Will do. We have a winner. Ooh. Who won? Me. Addy won all and 10. Two. And what was the last one you found to win, Addy Brew? A left. traffic light. Good yeah. job, girly. What time is it, Colin? Toy time. We get another bag. Yay. We get bag number two. What huh? is it? Huh? What is it? Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. You, oh, that's for Ooh. Addie and Maya to play. What do you get? What is that? Patrol. A Paw Patrol controller. Ooh, oh, that's so cool. The flip slide game that the girls are playing is something I found at Target. It's made by Moose Toys. I tested it out before I packed it up and it's a lot of fun. It's a fun game. You can play in four different modes. You have to move quick and match things. I think it'll keep the kids busy. We're gonna have to learn how to share it.
it was a little tricky putting the surprise bags together because of the different ages of the kids. Like there were a lot of things that I knew Addie and Maya would have fun with, but that were a little bit too difficult for Colin. So for some of the bags, I put in separate activities for the girls versus activities for Colin. We stopped real quickly. We're in Memphis, Tennessee for some lunch. This means we're almost halfway done with our trip. We're about three hours in and have about three and a half hours left to go. What did we just pass that's in Memphis? St. Jude, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. That's right, you have your mask on for them, don't you? Yeah. Representing. We had an opportunity to visit St. Jude about a year ago, maybe two years ago, and it was just such a wonderful place. We definitely support it and just think they do wonderful things there. Just cross the state line to which state? I don't know, do you know? It's time for bag number three. <laughs> My turn to open. What's in this wow. one? There's three push pops, but there's more. Push pops for everybody. Yay! They're these things. These are little fidget toys I oh, found. Yay, I love fidget toys. The fidget toy was another target find. And on the box, it showed all these different cool shapes you can twist and turn it to create. I did unpackage everything before I put them in the bag, though, because I didn't want to have even more trash inside our car than we needed. So everything's unboxed, and we'll have to figure out what they can create by fidgeting with it. an Animal Planet Guess in 10 game. The object is to ask intelligent questions to guess what's shown on the game card. You can only ask questions whose answers are yes or no and use your clues wisely to guess what the animal is. You guys wanna play? Yes. I have my first card. The first two buzzwords that I'm gonna tell them are small and slow. Schloss? I don't guess yet. So you only get two guesses. That's one of your guesses. Is it a wild animal? No. Could it be used as a pet? A slam. No. Is it an animal that lives at the zoo? No. There are clue cards you can use. Would you like to use one of your clue cards, girls? Sure. Clue card one, two, or three? Three. Clue number three. While moving, I leave behind a trail of slime. Oh, is it? It is! Yes. You get the card, you have one card you got right so far. Good job, girl. So the first one to three? So the first person to seven cards wins the game. Addie has one, the rest of us have zero. Well, we're getting closer and closer. We're just a little over an hour out and it's now time to go on to our fifth bag. Ooh, what is that? Hank Man. Hangman. Word is seven letters long. Colin thinks C. C. Let me see. The first letter is C. Good guess, Colin. The first letter is C. Is there an E in it? There is no E. So now we have the head. And the body. And we add that on. Is there an R? There is an R. I guess there is an S. An S? No S. Cowgirl! Is that the word? It oh, is cowgirl! Oh, you're good right. job, Bailey! This was actually a game I found on Amazon. I think it'd be great for an airplane ride, too. It's all magnetic. They had all sorts of games from Hangman to matching games. I think what some others were, but there was a good variety. We're actually getting really close to our mystery destination now. What's inside? Colin gets a man hand thing. Ooh, Ooh. Man. And me and Addie get some Mad Libs to play. Ooh. So Maya, before you get busy on Mad Libs, you gotta tell us how many license plates we found. We found quite a few, I'm pretty impressed. We found 33. 33 different license plate states. Yes. That's pretty cool. That's actually way more than I thought we would find. 
Well, we're on the home stretch, so if you wanna find out where we're headed, be sure to watch the next vlog on Monday. It's gonna be a really big, exciting one. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So kiddos, how was the whole car ride without screens? Awesome. Was it okay? Yeah. I actually thought it was pretty fun. I had a really good time with it, actually. I think we all did. XOXO, bye. We are going to begin 28 days of no screens. <laughs> Wait, what? tuning into Tic Tac Toy Family today. I'm about to go tell the kids something that they are not going to want to hear. And I think you're gonna be pretty surprised about what we're getting ready to do. Hey kiddos, we have something we need to talk about so we gotta turn off the TV for a second. Okay. Colin, come downstairs, buddy! I'm going to break some big news to the kids. What's the big news? You sound nervous. I am. <laughs> are you nervous? No, I'm excited. You are? I'm excited. You're excited too? I'm really excited, guys. Jason and I have been thinking about doing something for G. It's probably the last nine, 10 months, for quite a while now. Yep. We are going to begin four weeks, mm -hmm. 28 weeks. days of no screens. Okay. That means what? no TV. Wait, what? That means... I thought you said no screens. No screens. <laughs> Not screens. <laughs> no TV, no tablets, no iPods, no computers. Four weeks, no screens. How am I supposed to film gaming videos? We're gonna go on a four week pause. What do you think, Colin? Mm. <laughs> do you not like that idea? What do you, why not? Cause no, no tablet. No um, tablet's gonna be tough, isn't it? Yeah, that's gonna be tough, Colin. How do you feel about it, Maya? I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Wait, can we do that? Af can we start that like after a sleepover? Because the TV is like the main thing that keeps us awake. I've actually thought about this, and I think we're gonna start. Today is Friday, and we're going to start on Monday because yeah. I've had and Jason's had a long time to process it to think about how we're going to handle it what we're going to do but i didn't think it was fair to the kids to spring it on them and tell them it starts now so we're going to have the weekend to kind of let that idea sink into our heads and then starting on monday we will begin 28 days of no screens I'm very angry. you're very angry <laughs> it's okay to not be happy about the idea i don't think screens are bad you know, obviously we have a YouTube channel. We rely on screens. We use tablets, we use iPods, I use my phone, we use computers. I don't think they're bad. I just think we've gotten to a place where we're relying on them too much. And we kind of need to slow down our screen consumption and this seems just like the perfect way to do it. Not, it's never a perfect idea. No? I honestly think this is gonna be one of those things that when we get to the end of it, we're gonna look back and think what a great idea it was. Now, I know it doesn't seem that way right now, but I think, and I, I don't know for sure because obviously we haven't begun and I don't wanna have all these high expectations of what's going to come out of it, but I just have a feeling we're gonna really come to enjoy being away from our screens. I cannot live without screens for a week. Well, you're gonna do it for four weeks. What? <laughs> Did you miss that, Maya? I can't do four weeks. Oh my goodness, that's long. Like I said, Jason and I have been thinking about doing this for the last nine or 10 months. There was one event that happened that really was eye-opening to me and which gave me the idea to do this in the first place. We had a pretty big storm hit Nashville several months ago and we actually lost our power. We lost our electricity, the lights went out, Everything that requires electricity in our house was gone for a few days. Now, thankfully, we had some really nice friends who were able to lend us a couple of generators, which allowed us to hook up parts of our home to these generators and bring power to parts of our home. Now, the first thing we hooked up was our refrigerator because we don't want all of our food to spoil, which makes sense. 
But the second thing that we hooked up because we felt like we could not live without it was our internet and our TVs. And when we chose that over like the lighting in our house or over our washer or dryer or a dishwasher, I really thought, wow, we put way too much emphasis on our screens and maybe we need to make some big changes. I don't know what's gonna happen over these next 28 days, but we invite you to come along on this journey with us and see what life is like in our house without screens for four weeks. I think Sandy's really happy about us not having screen time because then I literally come out here every day to play with Sandy to get her energy out in the backyard. And yesterday when we were coming home from school, Sandy was so happy I got home that she literally just jumped up on me. It was so funny. Are you up here? Oh my goodness. Oh, where'd you go? Oh, there's Maya. Hey, Well, we are on day four of no screens, and I have to say that it's going a little bit better than I thought it would. I thought the first week would be pretty rough, but we've been pretty busy with school most of the day, so we've only had a few hours in the afternoons and evenings where we've really had to experience the no screen time. And truthfully, the weather's been so nice, we've been outside a lot. Tomorrow, though, we go from 65 degree weather to down to the low 30s and upper 20s, so things might start getting a little bit more difficult come tomorrow when the weather changes. Help! Gotcha. <laughs> Annie, what game are we playing right now? Life. The game of life. I'm gonna be a teacher. We love playing games. What are some of our favorite games like play, Maya? Catan and Ticket to Ride. That's right. So now that we've had some extra time, we're introducing the girls to some classics, which we played as kids, Jason and I did. So we're playing Life right now. And what are we doing later tonight? Monopoly. Monopoly, that's a classic. It can be a long one though. So we gotta rest up for Monopoly. Oh. oh, you were so close. Well, it's day seven. We have survived the first of four weeks with no screens. The week went pretty smoothly. The weekend has been a bit more of a challenge. There's obviously been more time to fill and we've had to fill this time without TVs and screens and computer games and tablets. And as a result, the house has gotten to be a lot more messy. Right, Colin? There are game pieces strewn about, slime all over the place. We've had faces painted. We've done some baking. So the house has gotten a little bit messier over the weekend, but I also think there's been a lot more laughter and a lot more giggles and a lot more silliness. Addie, what has been the hardest part about a week without screens? Probably when I come from home from horse riding, um, my legs are so sore, I usually just plop down on the couch and watch TV, and I was about to do that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no screens. Have there been any surprises? with no screens that you've actually found something you've enjoyed? Yeah, um, we we just had a sleepover with our friend last night and um, I just, I realized that we have more fun when we're not gluing our eyes to the TV, which we do like every sleepover. <laughs> what did you do instead? We, um, so we like to design Barbie dolls, like redo their hair and outfits and everything. So we did that, we did dance parties, we did lots of stuff. <laughs> It is day nine and we have a very snowy day today. Are you exploring, Colin? Uh -huh. We don't want to get wet, buddy. Oh goodness, Colin. Have we ever had this much snow in Tennessee? No. This is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. We've lived here for two and a half years and we have never had enough snow to actually plan and boy, did we get it this week. Hide and 
seek until me and Colin are trying to go find them. What has it been like trying to get school done with Colin around all week? Quite hard because he would come in one in the middle of the day and uh, and sometimes you would have to go get daddy to go watch him. <laughs> and daddy's trying to get work done too, isn't he? <laughs> I'm so Colin, that's not a good idea. I have to admit, our second week was a lot more difficult than our first week. Because the snow school was canceled all week, Monday through Friday, we still wanted to continue school at home, so we did homeschool Monday through Friday, which proved extra difficult because Colin was out of school too, and Jason still had work to do during the week, so we were all trying to balance Jason doing work, the girls not doing homeschool, but still finding ways for Colin to be entertained and happy and taken care of without being able to use a TV or a tablet as a babysitter. Jason ended up taking a lot of work out of his office and going to work in Colin's room so that Colin could play while he was working and could still keep an eye on him. Um, and then I let the girls take turns going to play with Colin while I worked with the other daughter. And it was just a lot to handle. It was hectic, it was chaotic. There were definitely some moments where we all got frustrated and sometimes the best of us did not come forth. But now that it's the weekend, I'm hoping we can kind of um, rework things and start fresh with our third week. And if I'm being totally honest, Jason and I almost caved yesterday. Oh, we had a conversation last night and almost just decided to throw in the towel and have like a movie night because we were just feeling the stress and feeling how difficult it was and realizing it was taking a lot out of us to keep everybody entertained and happy away from screens. And we pulled through, we're still going, but, but there was a moment where we almost ended it all. Who's at our house today, buddy? Aunt Karen, and who else? Uncle Brian! Uncle Brian, and who's behind us? Honey? No. Who's behind you? Uh, uh. Is that your cousin? Huh? Lila Jean. Lila Jean! Is it the best time ever when Aunt Karen, Uncle Brian, and Lila Jean are here? Yep. We're at about the halfway point, which is pretty cool. And I actually think these next few days are gonna be super easy because we have family in town. There's gonna be so much to do. It's gonna be non-stop fun that who needs screens right now? Oh wow, I love the pose at the end. Aunt Karen is busy filming too. What's your channel, Aunt Karen? Hey mamas. Hey mamas, you can check out our channel and watch Aunt Karen. But more importantly, Layla more, Jane. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> more importantly, Layla Jane. Hey Layla, can you smile for the camera? Big Give your smile. big smile. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Are you a student at Hogwarts? Yes, I'm Luna Lovegood, and we are going to be doing a Hogwarts test. Ooh, good luck. Who are you, oh my Addie? Gosh, Hermione. Hermione, of course. They should have known. Okay, everyone, time to start your divination quiz. today. Uh -huh. And you have chocolate ice cream all <clears throat> over you, don't you? <laughs> oh, I win! <laughs> I win again. We are in Arkansas for a few days and a couple days ago we faced our most challenging day without screens and it was the day that forced me to really plan ahead and think things through in order to survive it. And that was a six and a half hour car ride 
to get here. Now normally we rely pretty heavily on screens and tablets and DVDs to make it through long car rides and airplane rides, but I was forced to get really creative and you'll have to watch, I have a whole vlog telling you all in detail what I did for our road trip. And I think everybody had a really great time. Now we'll just have to survive the car ride home tomorrow. There have been a few instances where we have allowed the kids to get onto screens during these past few weeks. Often they're for school purposes or what Maya is doing right now is that she is attending her weekly art class and right now the art class is in Zoom. We were okay with her continuing this because she's learning a lot obviously. She's using some creativity and it's something that she really enjoys. I have to say that I've been really enjoying the quiet that has come with no screens. In the past, we had the TV kind of on as background noise for a large chunk of the day. It often came on when we would wake up in the morning and sometimes it would still be on before we went to bed and it was just constant background noise. And I never realized how bothersome or annoying that was until I have been without it. And it has been wonderful. I'm really, really enjoying the quiet. It should clarify that there is still noise in the house, but it's a different kind of noise. It's often the noise of kids running around, kids giggling, kids playing games, sometimes kids arguing and bickering. But honestly, I would much rather hear that noise than the noise of a TV constantly blaring in the background. Addie, what are you and Caroline working on right now? We are working on some crafts for our hideouts. What so kind of craft? I just finished a little secret stash box that we got on vacation a while ago. Caroline's painting a birdhouse that is a mini replica of our hideout, so like birds can stay in it. <laughs> and then we also bought some canvases, so I'm eventually gonna paint some of those. And it's gonna go in your hideout too? Yes. Fun. I feel like our time away from screens has helped you guys get a little bit more creative. Do you feel that way too? Yeah, I feel like we've gotten a lot more crafty and creative. No screen days are definitely the days when it is beautiful outside and we just can't resist being out here. Well, we made it. We did four weeks without screens. So what did we think? Let's start with you, Addie. For the first few days, it was so hard. All I ever thought about was TV. <laughs> How do you feel now, four weeks in? I feel pretty happy about it. We feel, we feel like we had more fun on sleepovers since we were just gluing our eyes to the TV. And she did a lot of reading. I was mm -hmm. proud of you. She read hours a day sometimes. Yes. That was pretty cool. What about you, Maya? What was the hardest part of no screens? Not watching TV. <laughs> they had their YouTube channels that they like to watch, which you kind of fell behind on. But what did you enjoy about it? I spent more time like doing some crafts and drawing and playing with friends, mm -hmm. playing outside. <laughs> playing outside. Jason, what were your overall thoughts? Um, it was certainly tough in the beginning, getting used to the new um, way of things, but I think after a little bit, we all kind of got used to the new way of life without screens, and I actually enjoyed um, not having that aspect to our lives. I did too. I really <laughs> did too. I honestly felt like the kids got along better. It was just nice not having the TV blaring in the background, so there was more reading going on, more creativity. You guys are outside a lot normally. You guys do spend a lot of time outdoors, but I think they were outside even more, which was pretty cool. There's another YouTube channel that was part of my inspiration to do this called Reclaiming Motherhood, and they went one year without screens. A full year. What do you guys think about doing the next 11 months. Let's do we it. We are not doing that. <laughs> Whatsoever, I am not doing that. I heard they had just amazing benefits from you with that screen, which is pretty cool. We probably won't do a full year, 
but I would love to incorporate it more into our normal routine, less screens. So we've talked about in the mornings, no screens, and we're all on board with that, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So mornings, no more screens, which is nice. And then we talked about maybe one day a week, one weekend a month, one week a year, no screens. I think we can handle that. <laughs> one week a year? One week a year, that's not bad. One day a week, one weekend a month, and then one week a year, no screens. We can do that. We Easy. can do that. We did a whole 28 days. <laughs> one week is no big deal. All right. You're right, I'm right. But now that we can do screens, what's the first thing you're gonna watch or play or do with a screen? Probably just play games on iPads. Play games on iPads? What about you, Eddie? First thing you're gonna do? I'm probably watch Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast? <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Colin's about to get home from school. What's the first thing we think he's gonna do? Play a Spider-Man game on his iPad. Play a Spider-Man yeah. game? <laughs> or play <laughs> Minions so. game. Or Minions, good he's call. He's been bringing Minion toys. Well, thank you for watching our fun little experiment. I thought it was fun. Maybe not everybody else, but I enjoyed it. XOXO! Bye! Digital detox means that we are going to be doing no screens for 30 days. This is easy peasy. Luckily, I have a book obsession, so my TV is basically on paper. Wait, we're finished? It's almost over. Hey guys, thank you for joining us today. We are doing something pretty big because today is day one of our family's digital detox. Day one of 30. Digital detox means that we are gonna be doing no screens for the rest for 30 days. So that's no TV, tablets, iPads, or iPods, or really anything with a screen. That's right, our church is doing a 30-day digital detox and we are going to be a part of it. You may have noticed we had a video about two years ago where we did 28 days of no screens and this is going to be kind of similar but we're going to be taking it to the next level. Right now I'm feeling very excited for it but also a little bit nervous. Honestly I'm not dreading it too much. I had a lot of fun last time and I hardly spend any time on my screens anyways. I spend most of my free time reading and like basically reading, spending time with my horse. So, you know, I don't, I'm not really on screens anyway, so this won't really affect me very much. Well, I don't really use my tablet that often, but I do like to watch like movies and Netflix shows and stuff. So I think like whenever I'm bored, I just like go and watch TV. So I think I'll just have to be like, okay, let's go play outside. Colin, how do you feel about no tablet or TV for 30 days? You don't know? Do you think it's going to be hard? Mm. No? No. Do you think you'll miss the tablet or the TV the most? Mm, TV. The TV? What shows do you like to watch on TV? Shark Dog. Shark Dog, that's right. We're going to miss Shark Dog. Well, so far it seems like no one is incredibly worried or panicked, but it's only day one. Addie, you've got the tablets. Yep. Where are they going? Um, probably in Dad's office on a really high shelf so some of the younger and shorter children, such as my and Colin, aren't tempted to grab their stuff. It's dusty up here. <laughs> I don't think anyone's dusted these shelves in a long time. <laughs> oh, well, we are so excited for you to join us on this journey. The last time we did this, by the end of it, we loved it. We didn't regret mm -hmm. it one bit. And I think we're gonna feel the same way after these 30 days as well. We'll see. We are on day two with no screens and so far it's going pretty well, no major complaints. Right now a couple of the kiddos are working on a STEM building kit that we've had just sitting in a box for quite a while so I'm glad to see that it's coming out and it's getting some use. One thing I remember from the last time we did this is that when there are no screens, 
the house tends to get a little messier because more things come out from the cupboards, which I'm totally fine with. It's just an adjustment. Addie, we like the new haircut. Thank you. How many inches did you get chopped off today? Like five, six inches maybe? Somewhere around there? Looks good. Oh, thank you. It's day four and so far things are going really smoothly. We've actually had a rule in place in our house for several months now where we don't have screens during the school weeks. That means there are no TVs on, there's no tablets on until we get to the weekend. So I think the true test is going to come this weekend when the kids don't get to turn those TVs and tablets back on. This is easy peasy. puzzle and our mom got it because corgis are my favorite dog in the world and we started it today and I think it's coming along pretty far but it's a lot of pieces <laughs> doing pretty well. The toughest part this weekend was when we had an active schedule. We were roller skating and at trampoline parks and we got home and just wanted to crash in front of the TV and put a movie on and we couldn't do that. Luckily I have a book obsession so my TV is basically on paper and I mean I like watching some shows on TV but Books are more pleasurable to me. <laughs> Maya, what did you turn to when you just went out to bed down in front of the TV? I pulled out my drawing set and started drawing some art. And you did a lot of painting too this weekend. Yes. These are peanut butter fudgy cookies and these are family's favorites. We love these cookies so much that we could probably finish an entire batch by the end of the day. One of the things that helped prepare me for this digital detox was a book that I read over spring break. This is called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, and it's by John Mark Comer. It is a great read. I read it two times, actually, over spring break because it was just filled with a lot of practices that I wanted to start putting into my own life as well as the lives of everyone in my family and that we could do together to make sure that we aren't distracted um, by just all the distractions, the digital distractions specifically of this world, and just kind of slow down our lives. So I highly recommend that book, all you moms and dads out there. Um, it's just been a great tool and resource for our family. Our family already spends a lot of time outside. Ever since we implemented the no screens on the weekdays rule, the kids have been spending most of their after school hours outside, especially Colin and Maya. And one of their favorite places to come play and ride bikes is the Arboretum. That's where we are right now. What do you think of this view of the creek? Good. It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh-huh. This should be like a water park or something. <laughs> it would make a nice water park. Can you skip rocks, Colin? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Colin just looked over at me and said, Mom, nature is my favorite thing. And my heart is just so happy right now because not too long ago, probably he would have told me his tablet is his favorite thing, so. I love that he's enjoying being outside in nature and is really appreciating all of its beauty. You guys, we finished our corgi puzzle. It looks good, girls. Yes, thank you. We had the whole family working on that and it turned out really well. It was teamwork. Okay guys, so I saw this trick on YouTube a while ago and Mai, do you think we should try it? What? Oh no. Okay, so basically, I'll just do a quick little demonstration of the trick Aww. so you know. You take a puzzle. Stop! It didn't break. Try, wait, should she try it again? No. Should I? No, stop. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't. I'm going to do it again? No. Boom. 
Okay, so we're actually tricking you there. <laughs> What did we do, girls? We, we put, put Mod Podge, Podge all over we it. We Mod Podge the soap. Pick it up. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what are we planning to do with our puzzle? Frame, Frame it. it. Frame it. And whose room is it going on? Maya. Maya's room. She's going to have a corgi puzzle in her room. Oh, yes. yeah. It'll help you remember our 30 days of digital detox. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we had so much fun doing the puzzles that we're gonna do more. So our next puzzle we're gonna do, I have it right over here, is a Broadway New York City puzzle because we're heading to New York over summer break. So we thought, let's do a puzzle that shows Times Square. Here's the puzzle tip for you. Always separate out all the edge pieces first and build the outer frame before you tackle the middle. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this particular digital detox is gonna be a lot more challenging than the previous one we did, and the reason for that primarily involves the phone. The last time we did it, we had no screens on the TV or tablets, and we minimized our adult computer use. The kids didn't use them at all except for school, but Jason and I still used our phones pretty regularly because we honestly felt like we kind of had to. But this time, we have made some big changes, and we have done a lot to make our smartphone more like a dumb phone. So what that means is we've gone through our apps and we have deleted anything that's not basically utility. We put all the apps into a category, whether it was a utility or a distraction. And any app that was a distraction, we just deleted from our phone. So that means I deleted Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, um, Gmail even, because all of those things, plus many more, were apps that I would pick up my phone, I would open the check, and it would end up distracting me, and I would be less present because I'd get a notification that I got an email on my phone, and then I'd read my email, and then it would lead to me clicking over to something else, and before you know it, I'd spent too much time on my phone. So some of the apps that we categorized as utility that we kept are just basic things like the weather app. I still have a calculator, I still have GPS, Venmo, my calendar, but those apps don't provide a distraction. I never get online and scroll through weather for 20 minutes or I never open up my calculator and play on my calculator for half an hour. Jason and I do check email. We do have to do some work on a computer. So we have times set aside during the day, like productivity times, where we will actually get on a physical computer, whether it's a laptop or a desktop, and that is time where we will sit down, we'll go through our email, and then we'll close our computer and walk away. for these many guys in here. And one of them are named Goldilocks, and one of them are named Blue. We are about two thirds done with our digital detox. It's a school day, Eddie's downstairs doing some schoolwork. Maya and I are folding clothes and trying to tidy up bedrooms, get a little organized. We really haven't done anything too majorly exciting or gone on any crazy adventures, but so far it's just kind of consisted of a lot of just quiet, around the house, simple activities, but they've still been very joyful. We've been doing lots of checkers matches, baking, playing outside. Colin and I have made Swedish pancakes for breakfast this morning. They were so good. We've been making lots of art and crafts and we've been making like new inventions. Yes, so a lot of simplicity, but everyone's been fully present for it since we're not having our cell phone sitting right next to us or having the tablet out or the TV blaring in the background. My 
right, how many puzzles have we done? This is our fourth one. Yes. This was puzzle number three, right Colin? Mm-hmm. We've done three puzzles and we're on our fourth. This is a cool turtle one. Was that one hard to do? Mm-hmm. It was very tricky. We finished our corgi puzzle, the New York puzzle, we finished the sea turtle puzzle, and yeah, believe it or not, we are on puzzle number four. Everybody's having a blast with puzzles, and we're learning that Colin is actually really good at puzzles. And here's our completed New York one. Woo! Addie, what kind of puzzle should we do next? A horse 